tonight. Let's stand together to sing and turn in this book to page 308. And we'll sing our best, page number 308, on the first and the last verse. Hear ye the master's call, give me thy best. you. Thank you for being here tonight. Good Easter service, of course, this morning, tonight. Excited about all God's going to do. Ushers, come if you will. And if you're visiting tonight for the first time, first time in a long time, thank you for coming to Parkside Baptist Church. We're going to ask all of our guests, if you'd be seated, please. Uh, We'd like to give you a visitor's card. And if you could fill that out in its entirety, please place it in the offering plate as it does go by. We would appreciate that. Brother Roberson's with us tonight. We are so glad uh, that he is out of the hospital, and uh, I had the privilege to go up and bug him a couple times in the hospital and spend time with him, and I'm just so glad that he's back on the men's, and so thank the Lord for that. Thank you. Be seated, if you will. If I call your name out, if you'll raise your hand, please. This is uh, Katie Lofton, if you'll raise your hand. The Vega family, Vega family, if you'll raise your hand. And again, uh, this is Katie Lofton right here, please, again, right here, and and this is to this is to Peyton, all right. And so, Brother JJ, if uh, you want to take care of this right here, that is great. Super, Amen. Uh, please don't forget when we uh, take an offering, the kids can come up and be able to give. I keep forgetting to say that before that time, and so I'm prepping you now. Great day today with the A, B, and C divisions, 912, and so we thank the Lord for that. And then 15 people walk in the aisle receiving Christ as Savior. Okay, let's, let's, let's make believe that we're in the presence of those angels in heaven, okay? The Bible says there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels. Now, listen to what it says. Over one sinner that repenteth, that's one person gets saved. Okay, so, so if they're going to rejoice in heaven, we're going to practice for heaven. Okay, here we go. We're going to practice for heaven. Uh, there, over one person gets saved in heaven, there's rejoicing. That, you know what that means? That means they're having a party. Okay, all right, you ready? Fifteen people got saved today. Uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And then there was, we, we have a brand new baptistry that's been installed, and uh, there were six people that followed the Lord in baptism this morning, so we thank the Lord for that, and what a blessing that is. Let me just uh, do this. If we have not given this out to you, we want to do this now, and uh, ushers will help me. We have a spring campaign coming up. It's going to start next Sunday, all right? Next Sunday. That means you got all this week to work on your friends and neighbors and relatives 
relatives that came today for Easter services, okay? And so we like to get this in your hand, and that way explains the campaign completely. And I'll get the ushers to come to the front, and then what we're going to do is, if you've not yet received a copy of this, now we passed it out in Sunday school. We passed it out in the morning service, uh, but there might have been a couple of people, or maybe you went home and the parakeet ate it, or the dog ate it, or the neighbor ate it. Or you and your wife got into a fight and one of you ate it. I don't know, okay? But if you need a copy of this, if you'll raise your hand, please. Allow the ushers to go ahead and put one in your hand. This explains entirely the spring campaign. Now, when you go, if you're, uh, if you're in a, a teen Sunday school, you're in adult Sunday school, next Sunday when you go to Sunday school, uh, there's going to be an attendance card that you will fill out, an attendance card. It's called a member's, a member's Sunday school attendance card. You'll fill that out, okay? You turn that into the Sunday school teacher. At the end of Sunday school, the Sunday school teacher is going to bring that card along with the visitor Sunday school attendance card, and they're going to turn it in at guest services. So it's not really hard to remember how to do that. Next Sunday, just for being in Sunday school, you earn 100 points. If you bring a visitor, if you bring a visitor, and down there when it says invited by who, your visitor puts down they were invited by you, then you get another 100 points, okay? The following Sunday, it goes up to 500 points, okay? The following Sunday, it will go up to 1,000 points, all right? So you try as hard as you can to bring visitors. Sunday school teachers be quite aware of the program. You'll be running the program in your Sunday school class, okay? Now for the children's divisions, for the children's divisions, uh, Brother Josh is going to work it out uh, so that all the attendances are taken in the children's division. So uh, the Sunday school cards that we're going to fill out is for teenage and up, teenage and up. So please be mindful about that. On the back of the brochure, we have put the rewards on there everything very easily understood, very, very simple to be able to do. And so read that to be sure that you understand everything about it and, and be involved. Get as many of your friends to come as possible. You be faithful. Let's just try for the next three weeks that everybody's faithful to Sunday school. You ready? Everybody, everybody faithful to Sunday school. You say, well, there's gonna be a Sunday I don't feel like coming. Bring your not feel like coming with you, okay? You take your not feel like coming to work you take your not feel like coming to um, go to class. You take your feel like not coming to eat breakfast, lunch, supper, midnight snack, midnight, midnight snack. And so you can bring your, I, I, I don't feel like it, you can bring that person with you to Sunday school, okay? So for the next three Sundays, everybody on board. Everybody on board. Everybody goes to Sunday school, 945. Everybody on board. You say, but I have a hard time getting up. Set your alarm an hour earlier. Okay? Set your alarm an hour earlier. Make it important. You say, well, I I'm always late. Let me help those of you that's always late. If you start earlier, you won't be late. It's just a little principle in life, okay? If you just start earlier, you won't be late. And, uh, and you just try your very, very best to be here for that. Now, we have the Baptist Leadership Conference. Men's going to help me again. If you've not yet received one of the brochures or you'd like to receive one to be able to get it out in the mail, get it to a friend, drop it in a brother's uh, or a sister's uh, mailbox or something like that, then uh, go ahead and receive these. We have plenty of these, uh, and uh, we want to get these out as many as possible. Maybe give it to your boss, give it to your employees whatever you want to do. So if you want one, two, three, or four of these, raise your hand. Ushers will serve you when they come down the aisle. And uh, Baptist Leadership Conference, by, by, by Wednesday night, by Wednesday night, uh, you'll see in the hallways, we'll have all the classes posted, who's teaching what class, and where the class will be, okay? So all the classes will be posted, what time the person is teaching, what room they're teaching in, the subject matter they're teaching in, and that way you can choose where to be able to go. If you want to come to the conference, no cost for you, unless you're registering as a delegate, you can do that, and then you receive all the material and all the giveaways. If you're just coming to the conference as a Parkside Baptist Church member, then and you just want to pay for the meal, you can do so. That's $5 per person. You can take care of that also at guest services. I do want to thank those that have signed up for the Lone Star Baptist College Presidents and Partners Club. Thank you so much for that. We are trying to get more Bible college started on the field. And then also uh, pray, if you would, please, uh, for Mrs. Mason. Mrs. Mason's dad 
uh, has passed. And so please pray for her. Please pray for the family. And, uh, and we're not sure. We don't think at this point that possibly he was saved. Is that right, Melissa? We're not sure. And so it, it's quite disturbing when you're not really sure if a loved one has gone home to be with the Lord or not. And so please pray for her. I know that's a disturbing time, uh, certainly a disturbing time. So please pray for her. I know that she would appreciate that so very much. Victory Baptist Church plant today, 63 in attendance. Thank the Lord for that. And uh, uh, there's one person walking the aisle, one person receiving Christ, and one person being baptized and 38 saved out on soul winning. Chapel on Wheels, Chapel on Wheels. This is great. Chapel on Wheels had 20 in attendance and six people saved. And we, again, there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels over one sinner that repenteth. And so uh, it's always great to hear that. And of course, Dale does a good job with her C uh, Sunday school program there. Of course, that's counted in with the division count, uh, but had 160, right, Dale? That was in attendance there. We thank the Lord for that. And so that is great. Well, if you're visiting tonight, thank you for coming. If you brought a visitor tonight, you'd like to introduce them. Would you stand, please? You brought a visitor tonight. You'd like to introduce your guest. Oh, would you stand, please? You brought a visitor tonight. You'd like to introduce your guest. Okay, right here. So from Bible Way, which is the church that Victory rents, the building that Victory rents, we have Miss Jayana, or Miss Jasmine, I went backwards. Miss Jasmine, Brother David, Brother Ralph, Miss Keisha, and Miss Aon. Wow, great. God bless you folks. Thanks for being here. Honored to have you tonight. Yes, right here. Okay, there you go. Hi, good to see you too. You waved hi. Good to see you. I'm glad you're here tonight. Good. Anybody else have a guest that you'd like to introduce tonight? I don't want to miss anyone. All right. Anybody else have a guest that uh, you'd like to introduce tonight? Okay, good. Let's give all our guests a big round of applause, please. Let's pray. We'll have our special. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for a good day this uh, morning. And the many folks here, hearing the gospel, and hearing the Bible preach, those that were saved and baptized, and others made decisions for you. Lord, I pray that you continue to work in our hearts tonight, and uh, be with the singing to come and the preaching to follow. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free, for his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and My constant friend is he, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I know he watches 
Good job, John. Hey, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the choir is doing a good job. 100% uh, participation in the choir. Uh, in other words, everybody was in their place this morning. Absolutely phenomenal. And orchestra. And that is amazing. And so thank the Lord for that. Uh, we are running a, a program now. I'll tell you what, Brother Palmer, come up and explain the alternate program. Just take a minute and do that, please. The choir now has an alternate program for those who would like to be in the choir, but they're serving in another ministry, pre-service Sunday p.m. ministry at 5 o'clock. He said, I want to be in the choir, but I can't make it to the rehearsal because I'm in Bible Blazer, or I'm Young Fundamentalist, or I'm counting in the counting room, or whatever it is that's going on during that time. That we have a program where you can be an alternate. You wouldn't be a regular, but you'd be an alternate. You'd fill um, open seats and so forth as needed. And so if you're interested in that and you're already serving in the church, you serve somewhere during 5 o'clock, but you'd like to be in the choir and get with me, I'll be glad to, intro to introduce you to that program and give you some more details. That is great. I appreciate, of course, the men working security, Dr. Bachman, heading that up. And uh, if, if it wasn't for them this morning, this afternoon, tonight, you would not have a parking spot. And so I appreciate them. Give them a big hand of applause, please. That's great. Appreciate that. You know, it, it's good to have men that work together. I saw several men out there, of course, uh, just doing a great job and making sure the parking lot uh, stays open for us. And, and we try to do that every Easter. Easter's the biggest time that we have the struggle with it. Uh, but they did a good job in, in working parking lots. Well, let's do this. If you had a birthday this month, this month, had a birthday, uh, would you stand, please? Birthday this month, would you stand? Would you stand? Uh, we're in the month of March, just to give you a hint. Okay, month of March. You had a birthday in the month of March, just to help you out in case that brain's kind of floating a little bit. Okay, month of March. Birthday, month of March. Okay, people still standing. Good, getting it figured out. All right, good. Let's sing happy birthday, please. Good, good. You say, who in the world is that hollering? We always release him so that he can be in the service at night when we do birthdays. And so we send him back, of course, to his chambers later on. But no, no, we appreciate Antonio. That's good. How about, uh, how about anniversaries this month? Again, dealing with the month of March. Uh, you, if you're married and uh, you're uh, here tonight, would you stand uh, with your spouse? Okay, good, good. And I, I guess Brother Rob's outside. You don't know where he is. 
Last time I saw him, he was smoking over there. So I, and uh, okay, all right, good, all right. Well, we want to uh, congratulate you, and we'll sing happy anniversary, and then we'll do a countdown. Beside your bride, uh, then on account of three, you can pucker up and let her go. Now, now, by the way, if you're visiting, it's it's okay, it's all right. We're we're in church and they're they're married and it's 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 just it, it's it's okay. Plus, it gives you an example. If you haven't kissed your wife lately, you can look at this and say, okay, do I want to do it that way? Do I want to do it that way? Do I want to do that? Or you look at it and say, do I want to do it? No way, no way. <laughs> you know, you can do that. Okay, here we go. Ready? Here we go. Church, help me. Ready? Three. Two, one, buck her up and let her go. There you go. All right. Give them a hand. That's good. That's good. You know, this morning we had uh, six people who was baptized, and again, uh, different men that helped out. We had, remember, we voted to get a new baptistry, and it did come in. It came in six inches short all around on the sides. And on the end, so they had to do extra work to get it put in, and they worked feverishly. And if you were one that helped out in installing the baptistry, would you stand, please? If you're one that helped out installing the baptistry, would you stand, please? And uh, these men I know put in well over 30 hours getting that in there and uh, just doing a spectacular job. Do you mind giving them a hand? Would you do that? I'm telling you, appreciate them so very much. You know, and uh, just doing a spectacular job with that. And that is, that is super. Well, God bless you. I'm glad you're here tonight. Just keep up the good work. Amen. Let's stand and sing, if you would, again. What a day that will be. Page 91 in your songbook. Sing the whole uh, song together, both verses. Page number 91.
Karloff as we sing the last verse. There'll be no Come and lead us in prayer. Thank you for being here tonight. If you are visiting, take your visitor's card, place it in the offering plate as it does go by. We would appreciate that so much. And be faithful in your giving to underwrite the support that's needed for the ministries through Parkside Baptist Church. Let's pray together, please. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for another opportunity to come to your house. Lord, thank you for uh, preacher. I pray you give him the words to say that we have that we stand in need of tonight. Pray you strengthen us and encourage us. Thank you for the offering, Lord. Pray you bless the gift and the giver. And uh, we thank you for uh, tonight. And give us aid as we go home after the service. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good job, good job. If you're interested in joining the orchestra or learning more about that, Mrs. Shipline is up here as the orchestra director, and you can be able to get some insight about that, and that would be great. We're going to pray, and we're going to have another special. Father, we thank you again for tonight. Lord, what a blessing it is to be able to come to church. What a blessing it is to be able to join together with these dear people right here. And Father, I pray now that we get ready to have another special. I pray that you begin right now to prepare our hearts for that which is the message to come. Thank you for these young men, uh, Lord, that it's going to represent our college as they travel abroad and it's just uh, in different states, different uh, type of youth camps and conferences. Use them and help us to learn to pray for them even as they prepare to do so. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. you but it has been quite the day in church i love love easter sunday i love resurrection sunday and uh, today has been a great day from people saved great music the great fellowship that we've had i got a few announcements here i want to go over monday is the youth conference registration deadline for the discounted cost of 95 dollars. okay so you want to try and get that taken care of by tomorrow on tuesday the price goes up to 110 so 
Young people, try and get that registration taken care of so you can get the discounted price, and that is done by tomorrow. Tuesday, 7 p.m., the adult soul winning meeting is in the senior Saint Sunday school class, and of course, Wednesday, 6 p.m., is the calm ministry, and then 7 p.m., the Bible study and patch club. And then, my last announcement, after the service tonight, the parents versus teens youth activity. It's going to start in the gymnasium about 20 minutes after the service. Uh, the cost is $2. Dinner will be provided. If you haven't gotten a chance to sign up for that yet, uh, parents Parents, the list, I believe the list is still back there at guest services, or we'll just take your money at the door, take your wallet, your keys, your phone, we'll just take it all. I'm just kidding. We'd love to have you come and be a part of that. I'm really excited. I actually brought with me the prize for parents versus this is a traveling trophy. Here's what happens. If the parents win, the parents get the year and parents put on this trophy. And every year we just keep adding to it. I really think the parents are going to win because I've stacked the deck, but I'm just... I just want you to come, come and be a part of that, all right? No, I'm just kidding. It's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be a lot of fun, and I do have the uh, ambulance on speed dial. Well, that is good. I saw the Loftons that is here tonight. They just got back off of a long cruise. They're all rested up. They're ready to go to help the parents win tonight. So we'll see how that goes, and, and, or we'll see if they just fall out along with every other person. Take your Bible, please, and go to First. John chapter 3 and in verse 2. I'm going to read our scripture, then of course our, our choir is going to sing. I appreciate our young people that are in the choir uh, that is sitting behind me right now that goes to our college. And again, uh, we're very appreciative of the parents and of the young people uh, that have a devoted trust in our college to be able to train them to do a greater work for God. And it's always exciting to be able to see all that God's doing in their individual lives. We're in the book of 1 John chapter 3 and looking down in verse 2. May we stand together for the reading of God's word, please. Where the Bible says, Beloved, it says, Now we are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Now, Father, we love you. We thank you for a great day today. Lord, it's always a wonderful blessing to come to the house of God. But, Lord, especially on Easter Sunday. Lord, I pray that you would bless our gathering tonight. Please do that. Be with the young people as they sing tonight. Use them to prepare our hearts for the message to follow. We'll thank you for that also. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated, please.
can't shout amen on that, your amener is gone, okay? Wasn't that good? So praise the Lord for that. That's a wonderful blessing. This is on. If you can turn me up just a little bit, if I can hear me better, I think that everybody will do better because I won't shout as loud. And, uh, and so that is good. Thank you, young people, for doing that. That is super, and appreciate that so very much. We're in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. I, I, I do not plan, I, I, I'm telling you now, I do not plan to preach a long message tonight. I do not plan to do that. I want you to know my intentions right out of the chute. And so I do not plan. I know what time it is. I'm going to tell you what time it is. It is 6 44. I do not plan to preach long tonight. We're in uh, 1 John chapter 3 and in verse 2. The Bible says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God. And it says, It doth not yet appear that we, now watch it, what we shall be. Okay? So we know who we are, but some people have a hard time understanding what we shall be. The Bible says, But we know that. Uh, when, we sh when he shall appear, we shall be like him. So we know that when he appears, we're going to be like him. Who is him? Christ Jesus. The Bible says, for we shall see him as he is. Of course, this is a, 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 a message tonight on our resurrected body. So what is it going to be like to have a glorified body? What's it going to be like, if you will, uh, when you get to heaven, what is your body going to be like? And so the subject matter tonight is our resurrected body, our resurrected body. I, I, I love to be able to teach and preach on this because of the fact this is what you are going to be like in heaven. If you've ever wondered what you're going to be like in heaven, you'll see tonight what the Bible says. There are seven uh, uh, proofs, if you will, and I was talking to Brother Wesso about this this afternoon after the service. But there are seven proofs that you can find in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now this morning, I covered the ground on uh, uh, the resurrection examined, the resurrection examined. How do we know that it took place? What are the proofs? that we know that the resurrection took place. Now that we've covered and we know factually, we know scripturally that the resurrection did take place, which you already knew, it just encouraged your heart this morning. Now we're going to see what takes place when you are resurrected, uh, when the rapture does come, if you would please, and you are in heaven. There are seven proofs if you ever want to be able to take somebody only to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is the place to go. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you'll see seven proofs to uh, that which is the resurrection of our Lord. Seven proofs right there in one chapter. I'll read them to you speedily. You see in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 4. The Bible says this, that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So your first evidence of proof that uh, the Lord did rise that the Lord did have a resurrection is the scriptures. Okay? Secondly, you see Cephas's testimony. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 5. The Bible says, and was seen, it says, of Cephas, then it says, of the twelve. So you have the second proof. Cephas saw him and did testify uh, after he was resurrected. Then you see the third truth there, or the third uh, proof, if you will. Again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 5, the latter portion, it says, then the twelve. So the disciples saw him. And then you see this. You see that uh, he is seen of over 500 people, 500 witnesses, if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 6. The Bible says after that he is seen, it says, uh, of above 500 brethren at once. Okay, and so 500 people at one time. Now, by the way, if you show up, I said this this morning, if you show up in a court and you have 500 witnesses to validate uh, what is true, uh, I can almost guarantee you without any uh, uh, reservation, you will win your case. Here is 500 witnesses. Uh, then we see that James testifies of it in verse 7, same chapter. After that, he was seen of James. And then we see the apostles in verse 7. It says, then it says, all the apostles. Then we hear Paul's testimony in verse 8. The Bible says, and last of all, he was seen, it says, of me also. It says, as of one born out 
of due time. So you have seven, seven documented evidences of the proof of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a, 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 a British historian. Matter of fact, uh, three times he was elected and appointed as the High Chancellor of England. He wrote this. His name was uh, John Cobley. John Cobley said this, I know pretty well what the evidence is. And I tell you, such evidence as that is before me concerning the resurrection has never been broken yet. And uh, this is a very intellectual individual. And I like to read those that uh, um, uh, are um, so-called intellectual in individuals, if they are intellectual. Uh, but you have those that are the atheists. They deny the accuracy of the scriptures. You have the modernists and you have the liberals and uh, they do not believe that the scriptures are inspired. And so they do not take the scriptures as they are in proving the resurrection of our Lord. But point in case, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 4, the Bible says he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So now one day we're going to be raptured. I mean, if we say, Brother Davis said this, he said, I want to make uh, age 100, and then maybe after age 100, I'd like to be raptured, okay? Now, the Lord had other plans for him, and the Lord might have other plans for you. But one day, we would all like to be raptured. We'd all like to be raptured. I, I'd rather go uh, uh, up in the rapture, if you would please, than be taken, if you would please, at a different time. But uh, uh, regardless, whether you go up in the rapture or whether uh, you uh, die an early death, uh, earlier than what you think you would like to die, and you're taken to heaven, what's your body going to be like? What is your body going to be like? I want to give you uh, some evidences in our scripture what your body is going to be like. And so let's notice it tonight. Statement number one. Our resurrected body, it would be a changed body. It would be a changed body. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 52, Bible says in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, it says, for the trump shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall uh, be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. All right, so what's going to happen at the, the time of you being raptured? What's going to happen at the time, if you would please, of you going to heaven? What's it going to be like to have a glorified body? Your body's going to be different than you have right here. Uh, some of you wear glasses, you not have to wear glasses again. Some of you walk with a cane, you'll not have to walk with the cane again. Some of you have to use a wheelchair, you'll not have to use a wheelchair again. Some of you have to have hearing aids, you'll not have to have hearing hearing aids again. Some of you have hair pieces. You'll not have to wear hair pieces again. Some of you uh, uh, have trouble losing weight. Some of you have trouble gaining weight. Uh, some of you have had broken bones, fractured bones. Uh, some of you have had difficulties with various dece diseases and uh, discomforts, but you'll not have that again. Your body's going to be changed. The word change here, uh, also uh, you would get the word transformed or better transfigured. And so we understand this. We understand that the body is going to be different. Billy Sunday was having a crusade many, many years ago when he was alive. And I love Billy Sunday. Uh, the, the adopted grandparents that I talk about in 1919, Billy Sunday had a crusade uh, in Baltimore City, Maryland. I've got a picture of it. And, uh, and uh, Lottie, which is one of the ladies that helped to raise me in Myrtle, uh, they walked down the aisle and their testimony is they shook the hand of a man by the name of Billy Sunday walking down the Sawdust Trail receiving Jesus Christ as Savior. So I've always had uh, Billy Sunday as somebody that uh, I, I looked at and I'm thankful for because of uh, people that was uh, relatives of mine, friends of mine, if you would, that received Christ as Savior under his ministry. But he said this, he said he contacted the mayor of a large city and he said, I, I asked him, who do you want me to pray for in the city that we might have revival? And and the mayor sent him back the entire telephone book. The entire telephone book. Now, the mayor had it right. The mayor had it right. Uh, the mayor knew that there's more people lost in the city than saved in the city. Doesn't it marvel you as you go out and about? Didn't it marvel you as you came to church tonight? All these cars parked out there uh, just to go walk around the park or have fun in the park or, or be with family in the park. You know, we are surrounded by city 
people. We are surrounded by people everywhere here in the metro. Now, can I tell you this? Uh, God wants all of them to be changed, but uh, they're not going to be changed unless they receive Jesus Christ. So we see our resurrected body. It will be a changed body. Statement number two, it will be imperishable. It will be imperishable. Now, what does that mean? First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 42. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 42. The Bible says, so also it says, is the resurrection of the dead. It says is sown in corruption and is raised, it says, in incorruption. The word incorruption simply means this. It's imperishable. What does that mean? That means this. It's not going to decay not going to decay. Uh, there was a man by the name of Mr. Uh, Solomon Pease. Mr. Solomon Pease. He says uh, this, and it's there on his tombstone. He says, uh, uh, this ain't Pease. It says, it's the pod. He said, Pease shelled out and went to God. Now, that's what it's going to be like. It's imperishable. So the, the, the body, if you would please, the body does decay. It happens. Right. It happens. As you get older, it's a natural thing that you slow down. Uh, as you get older, sometimes there's aches and pains and whatever else comes with that. But can I tell you, uh, one day, one day, you'll have that resurrected body. I, I tell people all the time, I remember the hardest funeral I ever preached in my life. We had two police officers that was members of our church where I was pastoring in Tennessee. And one of them was on the police force, and he was a patrolman. He did a great job. He patrolled the city and stuff like that. We were dear friends. And, but the other police officer, he worked down at the... At, at the, at the, at the jail and, uh, or, or the prison, if you would, that was near Union City. And uh, he was driving home one night late. These boys were twins. He was driving home one night, very late, and he fell asleep. He went off the corner of the road and uh, he hit a tree. It decapitated him. It took his head off. And, uh, and I remember, I remember we tried hard to work with this dear family and, and we loved this dear family. When they would come to church, they'd take up two, three, sometimes even three and a half rows of relatives that would come. And, and the people were, uh, a lot of people loved them and, and they were coming to the funeral and stuff. I remember oftentimes I would meet with the family before the funeral service and I would remind them, uh, you know, if it's a saved person, I would remind them that this is not the person. This is just their shell. They're already in heaven. If we could get it in our minds to understand that uh, once you are saved, once you receive Christ as Savior, do you understand at death, you're only taking a step. That's all you're doing. You're taking a step. The Bible says in the book of uh, 1 Samuel, it says that there is but a step between you and death. Now, if that's true, and it is, because God says, boast not yourself of today, for thou knowest not what it, tomorrow may bring. You understand this. You understand there's just a step. You are not promised tomorrow. I don't care what age you are. When I first became pastor here, uh, you'll remember you were here. And we had a couple who was in our church that lost little babies. Two of them. And I, I, I had the funeral service for two little babies. People die at different ages. Uh, I was driving down a road the other day going to visit someone and I stay out sometimes uh, longer than uh, maybe I should even on Saturday just making visits and loving people and encouraging people to come to church and stuff like that. But I was driving down a road and as I was driving down this road, I, I started watching the cars passing me and I thought, you know, God, I want to thank you. You've given me all these years to serve you. I'm still serving you. There's people that's died younger than I. And I'm still serving you. Can I say this? You don't know when you're going to take your last breath. You don't know. But one day it's going to happen. It might happen when you're a child. It may happen when you're a teenager. It may happen when you're a young adult. It may happen as a single young adult. It may happen as an older or a, a, a married young adult. But can I tell you, it's going to happen. But listen to me. When you take your last breath, you take your next breath in heaven. And you can rejoice about that. I'm saying our resurrected body, what would it be like? Would it be changed? It'll be imperishable. It'll be statement number next. Uh, it, it will have no sickness. No sickness. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 43. The Bible says it is sown in dishonor. 
It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Uh, that word uh, weakness there lends to the word of sickness. And so what happens is when a person, and I, I did, I, I, I'm speaking a little bit about Brother Davis because uh, he is on my heart and I know he's in heaven and I know he's probably not interested in what's happening right now, right here. You know, he's probably over there, you know, and just walking around fellowship with everybody knows. But, but can I tell you this? Can I tell you that the Bible talks here about there's no sickness. When Brother Davis fell out of that, he was in a, a rolling chair. And when he fell out of the chair, he fractured his arm. He, he'd had cancer for many years. Some people know that, some people don't. But he had cancer for many years. And so when he fractured his arm, I believe it took that cancer to a different level completely. And his body was not able to sustain it, to fight it off. But one thing about him, his spirit never changed. Never changed. You know, I appreciate it. I know that there was ladies in her church that went by to sing. Uh, I, I asked uh, Dr. Bachman if we could arrange for our tour group to go by and sing. And they went by and they sang to him. And it lifted his spirit. I know many of you went by and you saw him and you prayed with him. And, and you know, maybe you read scripture to him or maybe you gave him a book to be able to encourage him or whatever. But can I tell you, there will be a day when there is no more sickness. And the Bible talks about that being that day that you have that resurrected body. Now, uh, by the way, you listen to me. If you've not yet received Jesus Christ as Savior, you're going to see all the things you're missing out on tonight. First off, you're missing out on the fact that you're going to have a changed body. Amen. Do you understand that that's going to take place? Do you understand that in your glorified body? Do you understand in your resurrected body, if you would, that you are going to have a changed body? When I see my dear mother in heaven, my mama died of cancer. My daddy died of cancer. My daddy was a man's man. And, but can I tell you, I watched him shrivel away to nothing. My dear mother was nothing but bones with skin, barely thin skin, if you would, draped over her bones. But I remember the day when she wasn't sick. Brother Shipline, I remember the day when we would sit around and, and mom liked to play some dominoes. And, and I remember playing dominoes with my mom. And, and I remember uh, playing checkers with her. And, and, and she would say, I'm going to win. And I would say, you are not. And she said, I'm going to win. And if you'll look away, I'll cheat. <laughs> now, can I say this? When I see her, I will see her as the younger one, not the older, frailed one. I'm saying the body will be changed. I'm saying that uh, if the resurrected body that you have, it'll be imperishable. I'm saying that uh, it will have no sickness. No sickness. Do you realize that uh, the bathtub was invented in 1850? I want you to think about this. But the phone was not invented until 1875. That means that uh, people could uh, take a bath without being interrupted by a phone that was ringing. By the way, can I help you a little bit? I want to help you a little bit. Some, some of you are having trouble and you're saying, I tell you what, I just wish I could take a vacation and get away from all of everybody trying to get my attention. You don't have to take a vacation. Just forget your phone. Do, do like I do. When somebody has an emergency, that does not make it my emergency. I handle emergencies when I want to handle emergencies, especially if they're not mine. Hello. Uh, by the way, uh, most of my businessmen if, if, that are friends, if they're entrepreneurs, you may text them today and get an answer three days from now. D do you understand? You don't have to live by your phone. Do you understand that? We get on to the kids and we say, hey, listen, put your phones away. Let me help you, parent. Put your phones away. When you go out to eat, take your phone. Listen to me now. I'm helping you. Listen to me. When you go out to eat, take your phone. Put it down. Put it on mute. Silence. Look at your wife and say, hi, I'm here. For you and when the and, and the phone begins to zzz, ignore it don't touch it 
It is very rude if somebody takes you out and you're on a double date and they're there spending money on you and you're on your phone. That's rude. Hello? Somebody trying to have a conversation with you and you're texting while you're talking to them. Rude. Take your phone. Turn it upside down and have family. Hello? Hey, I love you. Listen to me. The reason some young people don't do well in school, including some of our college kids, you spend all night playing on your phone, trying to beat somebody on, on the internet website type of thing that you don't even know. And you're trying to beat these people. Forget it. Learn to live. Learn to live. Amen. Now, I've told parents for years, if your kid's going to get on the phone, if they're a teenager, don't let them have internet service. Right. Right. They can't handle it. Right. Get, get them a phone that is, 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 is not internet based. Just get them a phone. If they have an emergency, they can call home. Amen. Good. Boy, it's quiet tonight. I want my message to be a short message. Statement number one, your body will be changed. Statement number two, it would be imperishable. Statement number three, no sickness. Statement number next, are you ready? You will eat. Some people eat to live. But when you have your glorified body, you will live to eat. Luke chapter 24 and verse 42. The Bible says, and when they, that's the, the uh, uh, disciples, when they gave him, it says, a piece of broiled fish. Now, understand, he's in his resurrected body. And it says, and of a honeycomb, he took it and did eat before them. Right. Now, by the way, are you listening to me? There's going to be a marriage supper of the Lamb, Revelation chapter 19, verse 9. So we're going to have, we're just not going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb and sit there and stare at each other. It's going to be food. I mean, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be some of the best food you ever ate in your life. I know they're going to have pizza with uh, pineapple on it. It's coming. So uh, we're going to eat. Uh, Edward Hale said this. He, of course, was a distinguished uh, poet. Uh, he was the former chaplain of the U.S. Senate, and he uh, very eloquently said this. He said, I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And whatever I can do, I ought to do. And what I ought to do, by the grace of God, I shall do. So what was he saying? He was going to give it his very best. Now, can I say this? God will reward you at the judgment seat of Christ if you give it your very best. You know, if you're not giving it your very best, then what reward will you get? I'm saying in their glorified bodies, their resurrected bodies, it'll be changed, it'll be imperishable, there'll be no sickness, we'll have the privilege to eat. Statement number next, are you ready? Uh, 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 there would not, and I'm talking about your resurrected body, I'm talking about your glorified body, uh, wounds, and they are provided with the services they're supposed to render. You are not that created being. You are also going to be doing something in heaven, but not like the angels because they have different responsibilities. Okay? So we understand this, though, that, that in heaven, in heaven, there's not going to be the given in marriage. There's not going to be the marriage. But we do understand this, that in heaven, we will know each other. Let me show you a couple things, if I can, tonight. Statement number next, if you will. Uh, in a resurrected body, uh, we will not be limited to walls or doors will not be limited to walls or doors. John chapter 20, verse 19, the Bible says on the same day of the evening, it says being the first day of the week, it says the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. And Jesus, watch it now, and it says, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, peace be unto you. All right, then it says, John chapter 20, verse 26, the Bible says in eight days again, his disciples were within, same place, the Bible says, and Thomas with them, and they came, and the doors being shut, 
And he stood in the midst and said, peace be on you. So two times here he comes, he appears, the doors are shut. The disciples had uh, gathered for fear of the Jews. They're in great fear about what's going to take place. They themselves, that time, as I covered this morning, was not sure that Jesus was going to be resurrected. And here Jesus comes, and he comes in, and he appears in their presence, the doors being shut. Now, what does that mean? That means that doors are not going to limit you. Walls are not going to limit you. I could do something tonight to prove that that wall would limit you. I could do that. I could get one of the most robust, masculine looking college guys that we have. I could say, I want you to start right there. We're going to clear that orchestra out. This is ship line so we don't ruin everything that's in the orchestra. And I want you to start right there, Bubba. And when I say on the mark, get set, go, I want you to dig in with everything you got. I want you to point your body towards that wall, and I want you to run as hard as you can, and I want you to see if you can pierce through that wall. Now, can I tell you something? Probably, that's not going to happen. I mean, we could get somebody to come up here. Come here, Antonio, and prove it, if you will. We, we, we can get somebody that has this robust, robust figure. Now, I, I cannot say masculine. I'm just saying robust. No, I'm just kidding. Hello. I'm just kidding. Okay. But here's what we do. All right. And he takes off and he runs over there as hard as he can. I don't do this because the ship lines are here tonight and they will get mad at me and I will lose an orchestra leader. So don't do this. But if he was to take off and he was to take off as hard as he could and try to penetrate that wall, all we're going to have is a big grease spot on that wall. <laughs> it is not going to happen. He's going to bounce off of that wall. He's going to fall down like David did, laying before the Lord, and probably like David did, crying and asking God to answer his prayer. And in David's case, more than anybody else, he prayed that God would destroy his enemy. In this case, it would probably be me. Thank you, be seated. Watch this, if you will. But here's what we see. With a resurrected body, the doors and the walls are not going to stop us. Statement number next, I'm hurrying. Uh, we'll be clothed. We'll be clothed. Somebody says, well, uh, are we going to wear clothes? Well, let's look at it. Revelation chapter 19, verse 14. The Bible says, in the armies, it says, which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. How many of you have ever ridden a horse in your life? Raise your hand. Wow, look at this. Okay. How many of you that have ridden a horse in your life are from Texas? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you that have ridden a horse in your life is from some other place other than Texas? It's about time. Okay. Here's what we understand. We understand that people are going to us, save people. We're going to be with the Lord, and we're going to be coming on white Horses. You say, I don't want to wear, I don't want to ride a, a white horse. Tough. <laughs> That's what God says. So the Bible says that the armies, it says, which were in heaven followed him. It says, upon white horses clothed, listen to it now, in fine linen, it says white and clean. You ever see a guy wear a, a white shirt and he doesn't take care of it? It's not ring around the collar. It is color around the collar. You know, it's all yellowed and all stuff like that. Hey, in, in heaven, can I tell you what? In heaven, the linen is going to be white and clean. That's what it says. Don't you love your Bible? Okay, so here's what we see. We see that there is going to be those that come back and they're going to be clothed. That's statement number next. Okay, uh, it'll be difficult to recognize them at first. Be difficult. Uh, John chapter 20, verse 14, the Bible says, And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. The Bible says in verse uh, 15 of John chapter 20, she's weeping now, she's seeking, she's supposing that he is a gardener. In verse 16, the Bible says, And Jesus said unto her, Mary, and she turned herself and said unto him, uh, Raboni, which is to say, Master. 
okay? And so she didn't recognize him to begin with. Now understand, she saw him, thought he was a gardener. She didn't recognize him to begin with. But there was something noteworthy about his voice. Something noteworthy about his voice. Okay, so she heard the voice and the voice. Doesn't the Bible say that uh, you will hear the voice of that which is the shepherd? And you'll know that voice of the shepherd? It's good stuff if you dig in. But all of a sudden now, you see that she recognizes the voice, but not necessarily the person. I think I'm going to recognize my mom's voice. My mother was from Georgia. My dad from Maryland. My mom was a war bride. They met on Monday, and they married on Friday. They dated for five days. Met on Monday, married on Friday, then he said goodbye, and he went off to fight in the war. He stayed gone for about a year and a half, came back, picked up his bride. They moved to Maryland. On the way to Maryland, my mom was raised in a, a, a Southern Baptist Pentecostal type of background. She'd go to both type of churches. And so uh, half of her family was Pentecostal. The other half was Baptist or, or something there. And so she'd swing back and forth, never saved. Mom was never saved. And so dad gets in the car, says, come on. She said, okay, following her husband. They drove to Maryland. My mom's testimony is halfway to Maryland, he looked over and said, we are Catholic. You are now Catholic. And mom said, what is that? She didn't know. My mom and I got, uh, 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 what, what do you call it, went through the catechisms, or Catholicism, if you would. But we went through that together, me age 12, mom age mom. <laughs> and we went through that together. Now, uh, can I tell you this? Can I say this? That uh, uh, in heaven, I may not recognize mom. She shriveled up, had cancer, dad same. Might not recognize them because the last time I saw them, they were in dire straits of uh, being stripped, if you would please, of their physical being because of the cancer. Right. However, in heaven, I'll be able to recognize that voice for sure. Amen. The Bible says in John chapter 21, verse 4, the Bible says, of course, Jesus standing on the shore. Now it's, of course, the recording of the disciples. And Jesus speaks up to the children. And he says, have you any meat? And they answered, No. He tells them to cast the net, John chapter 21, verse 6. On the other side, multitude of fish was taken in. Then Peter, then Peter, the Bible says here, therefore it says the disciple whom Jesus uh, loved, that's John, saith unto Peter, it is the Lord. So Peter did not even recognize him. It was beloved John that recognized him. Now, because beloved John, are you listening to me? Beloved John had a very close relationship with Christ. It wasn't big mouth Peter at the time it was loving John you will recognize somebody more in heaven the more you love them and know them I think there's going to be people coming up you had what 81 on your bus today something like that 81 okay there's going to be people coming up saying hey brother Josh I rode your bus and I walked an aisle and I received Jesus as my savior hey I remember you on the bus Okay, wait a minute, watch this if you will. But he might not remember them because he didn't know them that well. Is that right? But probably you're going to know your loved ones quicker. Quicker. All right, here we go. I said that in your resurrected body, it's going to be changed. It's going to be imperishable. No sickness. You will eat. Uh, no marriage in heaven. That's where it got quiet. See, some of you are waiting, aren't you? I know you are. I just, blew your, I just blew your theology. I know you're waiting. You're saying, I'm not going to get married here. I can't find somebody as perfect as I want. I'm not going to get married here. I'm going to wait till I get to heaven. I'll find a perfect one there. Too late. No marriage in heaven. Our bodies will not be limited by doors, by walls, we'll be clothed, we'll not recognize uh, people uh, to begin with. Then lastly, what are we going to do? We're going to serve Christ. 
You know, that's why it's good to be in a church where you learn to serve. Amen. Well, what are you doing? You're practicing for heaven. Amen. For heaven. There's a great singer. Brother Palmore can help me with the name if he remembers. There's a great singer that um, Dr. Lee Robertson had a burden for. And um, so he moved him to Tennessee Temple University. Gave him a room. Charles Waggle, thank you, Doc. So Charles Waggle. So Charles Waggle would do this. Charles Waggle would go into his room. He'd stand up on his bed. And he would bounce. And the guy was like in his late 80s, early 90s. He'd be bouncing on his bed, just bouncing, bouncing. And they'd come in, they'd say, what are you doing? He said, I'm practicing for heaven. Practicing for heaven. And he'd bounce. Now, now you, you know, there's some things that you and I ought to do to practice for heaven. I think everybody ought to serve Jesus Christ. I think if you're in a church that does not encourage you to serve Jesus Christ, you're in the wrong place. Everybody ought to practice what you're going to be doing in heaven. And in heaven, we're just not going to sit around, hold hands, sway, and sing kumbaya. That's not going to happen. In heaven, we're going to have a job. We're not going to be the, uh, the angels. We're not taking their job. But we will have jobs. Listen to what your Bible says, I'm done. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 3, the Bible says, and there shall be no more curse. We thank God for that. It says, but uh, the throne of God says, and of the Lamb shall be in it. it says, and his servants. That's you and I. It says, and his servants shall serve him. Say, so, well, I want to know my job description. You'll find out when you get there. But his servants shall serve him. Can I tell you, it, it's, it's a great thing to be able to serve Jesus Christ. The pro-Alaskan bass fisherman that won more trophies than anybody else, comparatively speaking, in the history of that great fishing event. One night decided his goal would be to catch 100 bass in one night. He stayed out and he fished and he fished and he fished until he caught those. But he didn't catch them in one night. It took him, according to documentation, 40 nights. But he didn't give up because his goal was to hit the 100. During those 40 nights, he didn't eat very much. During those 40 nights, he lost 20 pounds, nearly lost his health, because he said, I have a passion for this. And isn't it amazing how we get passions for what we want? I, I worry sometimes about people that are Christians that do not have a passion for the things of the Lord like they should. We have passions for making money. And, and parents, you have to be very careful that you guide your children the right way to help them to see that is serving Christ is of the utmost importance, not planning out everything, but letting God help you. That is so important. You know, uh, when, uh, when somebody gets so involved and, and just, you know, it's all about me, it's all about my wants, it's all about my desires, and Christ is nowhere to be spoken of, there's a danger there. We understand this, that we ought to practice serving. Now, now, by the way, it doesn't say what serving, does it? You know, an usher in church, what is that? That's serving. Somebody works in the nursery, what is that? That is serving. Somebody, if you would please, that's a greeter, shakes the hand, smiles, God bless you, good to see you, welcome to church, that's serving, serving. Somebody working on a bus route, what is that? Serving, singing in the choir, playing in the orchestra, serving, working part of the security program. What is that? That's serving. Do you realize there's many places to serve Jesus Christ? Helping out with the Baptist Scout Rangers program. What is that? Serving. Helping out, if you would please, with uh, Pat's the Pirate. Serving. 
Bible blazers, serving. Young fundamentalists, serving. Sunday school teacher, serving. Assistant Sunday school teacher, serving. Helping out in any, anyone. Like, you know, it's good to be in the church where you can say, I just want to serve Jesus Christ. That's what I want to do. I'm done. One of the things I look forward to is being able to serve the Lord and to serve you. To me, that's like dynamite. To me, that's like, I mean, that's like having your ice cream sugar-free. Well, I'm sorry, that's what I can do. <laughs> having your ice cream, your ice cream, you do what you want. And eating it too. You can have the best of both worlds. I, I think, stand there, and you stand there. I think here's what we got. We have an element of people that believe this, that you have to, all the time, that you have to, it's almost like you're in the ministry. You know, you, you've got to give, you've got to be totally, your, your everything, all the time. But some of us is not called to full-time ministry. Some is called to education. Mm -hmm. Some are called to be dentists. Right. IT guys. Working in colleges around America. Police officers. Firemen. Do, do you understand that? But while you're doing that, you should always keep Christ first. Here's, here's the challenge you have in your life. You can get so involved and doing other things. Put your Bible down. Get so involved in doing other things that you forget who should be first. Uh, when I start to see that, I start to see people show up late, I get concerned. You know why? Because I don't want them to drift. I don't. I, I want you to get everything, everything that God has for you. I don't want you to miss church. Right. I, I just don't want you to miss church. Amen. I see people that, don't get mad at me. I'm almost done. But I see people that they never get sick when it comes time, or they're never late when it comes time to go on vacation. But they seem like they're always late when it comes to Jesus. Come on. Shouldn't be that way. I said this morning, just trying to help people with their schedule. I said, if you know you're going to be late, and that is your, that is your, your MO, that's your profile, that's in your DNA, you know, and everybody knows it because they always see you walking in late. You can change it. Start 15 minutes earlier. Start 30 minutes earlier. Don't go to bed at night. Whatever. <laughs> you can always make it on time for things that are important to you. And God, the church, the one institution that Jesus Christ himself only established, should be the most important to you. So what do you do? What do you do? You get as close to serving God as you possibly can, good. representing that which is Christ, goodness. And you got to go to work. But what you do is you take Jesus with you. That's what you do. And that way, you never have to worry about it. He starts pulling on me, says, you need to go. Oh, no, no, help, help, help. I rely on him. And I don't get pulled away this way. It's all about decisions, isn't it? Yes, sir. It's all about decisions. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for church. Thank you for the dear, dear people that's here. Help us, I pray. Help us understand what our glorified bodies are going to be like. Help us to rejoice that one day, one day, we see what it's all about. And Lord, you give us examples in the Bible, what we can anticipate, what we can expect. Help us to do our best to be able to represent you well, even now. And Lord, we we'll thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. You say, Pastor, why don't you pray for me? 
I don't know for sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. There's a doubt, reservation, lack of peace, uncertainty. I don't know, listen to my words, I don't know that I'm going to go to heaven. But I'd like to know that I'm going to go to heaven. I don't know, but I would like to know that I'm going to go to heaven. Please pray for me. Here's my hand. Would you raise your hand? Just put it up. God bless you. Thank you. Anybody else? Pastor, that's me. I'm just telling you it's me. It's, I'm just being honest tonight. It's me. I don't know for sure. If I died, I'd go to heaven. Please pray for me. Here's my hand. Raise your hand. Anybody else like that? In a little bit, we're going to have an invitation. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for doing that. Those that raised your hand, I want to invite you. Simply leave your seat, come to the front, let one of these gentlemen get somebody to deal with you from the Bible, showing you how you can, listen to my words, how you can know that you'll go to heaven. Most important thing you could ever know is that you're going to go to heaven. You're here tonight as a believer. And you say, preacher, God spoke to my heart. I need to give more attention to the things I should be doing right now in serving Jesus Christ. Please pray for me. Here's my hand. Yeah, God bless you. Let's all stand, please. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father, you've seen the hands of precious people, and I pray tonight that you'd help us to take inventory on the inside. Help people, Father, that are here tonight that do not know they're going to go to heaven. Lord, you help them to come. Let us take a Bible and show them how they can know that for sure. Then, Father, for those that are believers that need to uh, uh, work harder in serving you, may they come, get on their knees, ask you for help. And, Lord, we'll thank you for that, too. In Jesus' name, amen. God spoke to your heart as they begin to play right now. Maybe you ought to come. Maybe you ought to come. Maybe you ought to come, get on your knees, ask God to help you. Maybe you ought to maybe restructure some priorities in your life so that Christ is first. What about you? Josh, you need to go ahead and go and get ready. and he, She can fill that out on her, on her own. Go ahead and take him up. There you go. Others will be coming too. If you're a baptistry worker tonight, please go back. We have several young people tonight possibly found the Lord in baptism. Most important thing you'd ever do in your life, my dear friend, know for sure you're going to go to heaven. Settle it. Settle it. Make sure you know. Make sure your relatives know that they're saved. Make sure they know. What about you? Take your time. No rush, take your time. Don't rush it, take your time. If I can have this doc right here, right here. What about you tonight? What about you tonight? Do you know for sure if you died, you go to heaven? Have you settled it? Most important thing you could ever do in your life is receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. What about you? What about you? People being dealt with across the pews up front, receiving Christ or making other decisions. And that is so vitally, vitally important.
Thank you. Be seated, if you will. Let me just give you a couple closing announcements. On Wednesday night, I'll be teaching one of the final lessons. I've taught now 21 lessons on victory uh, is yours, how to have personal victory in your life, things we deal with on the inside internally. And I'll be teaching Wednesday night on victory over failure, victory over failure. If you've ever had failure in your life, I'll show you how not to revisit it or to keep yourself in that self-induced bondage. Uh, Brother Salazar would like to have a quick meeting with all those interested in taking the trip to Mexico right over here. Just a five-minute meeting, is that right? Five-minute meeting right over here. That would be after the service. Uh, please don't forget, there's the parent versus teens tonight. That's an activity in the gym. There's a children's activity, sixth grade and below, that would be in the fellowship hall. So please be mindful about that, if you will. I don't think you're going to have problems with the traffic and going out like you did coming in because it's getting later. Most people, of course, I think are probably partied out over there at the park. Um, don't forget, of course, upcoming leadership conference. Plan on being here, and you'll get to hear great preaching every night, and you'll enjoy that. If you're wanting more information about any announcements that was made, please stop by guest services out here. Uh, always be looking, if you will, for visitors. Let me help you out a little bit. Uh, if you don't mind, God gives us many, many visitors. I'm not just talking about on Easter. There is very seldom ever a night on Sunday morning or Sunday night that we don't have visitors. And I want you to do a, 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 a favor, if you will. If you see a visitor, make them feel welcome. Go up, shake their hand smile at them a little bit, uh, you know, uh, and make them feel welcome, if you will, and that way they know that they are welcome. By Wednesday night, we'll have out here, posted in different areas, the subject matters that will be taught in the classes. I'd like for you to come to a couple of the classes during the day if you can take a break, especially those classes that you think would be uh, helpful to you. And so we'll have that out on the walls by Wednesday night for the Baptist Leadership Conference. We have a, uh, Elijah Wells. Elijah received Christ as Savior, and this is one of our grandsons, uh, age seven, and uh, he has received Christ. He wants to follow the Lord in baptism. Both his mom and dad has questioned him in detail. He knows, of course, that he is saved and now wants to be baptized, and so he'll be baptized in just a minute. After the service, uh, please don't forget, of course, the activities that's corresponding with what we said a moment ago. Bookstore will be open. Heritage Cafe, Cafe will be open as well. You can stop by there. There's two books that I'm advertising. Of course, I try to advertise different ones uh, for different church services. This is uh, a study on maintaining spiritual health, vitamins for the soul. And this is by Kathy Ashley, if you'd like to get that. And of course, uh, we knew uh, Sherry. Sherry has now gone home to be with the Lord. Uh, but this is a book that she wrote before going home to be with the Lord. And it's called Mimi's Bracelet, Salvation Crystal Clear for Children. Salvation Crystal Clear for Children. And it's a, it's a dynamic book. It explains salvation all the way through. And then if your child receives Christ as their Savior, of course, you could write their name in the front of the book. And this could be something that you can give to them at older age or whatever that they would be able to keep. Uh, for the rest of their lives as a reminder of that special experience. That's an excellent book in dealing with children when it comes to salvation, okay? We'll sing a song as we make ready for baptism. We will dismiss in just a little bit. In your songbook, page number 300, we'll sing, Oh, Say But I'm Glad, page number 300 in your songbook.
is Elijah Wells. Elijah, this past week, prayed and asked Jesus Christ to come into his heart. He got it settled, amen? So Elijah, my brother and my son, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, buried in the likeness of his death. Praise the walk and the name of the And the servant said, as done as I was commanded, and yet there is room. All right, let's all stand, please, if you will. Please stay away from the front pews. We have people being dealt with right now, and we want to give them all the liberty that we can to be able to be dealt with uh, peaceably and quietly. And so we're still going to ask those uh, interested in going to the trip to Mexico. And I appreciate Brother Salazar and Mrs. Salazar heading this up. They do a great job. I trust them immensely. And uh, they always do a great job in trying to get the gospel into Mexico. And so if you would like to be a part of that, uh, come up here to gather information that will give you the vital information you need in order to be able to uh, make a decision concerning that trip. We have other trips as well that you hear about throughout the year. Of course, with uh, Brother Bell going, I going, Brother Walters going, uh, you know, Brother, uh, uh, well, Brother Pollywathagal going, and, and I'm just trying to think of others that might go on their own, that sometimes we get just different people to go with us, and so you'll, you, you'll be able to do trips like that if you're interested in some of those trips to various countries you know, around the world, and so that's, that's very, very good. We'll sing our way out, and, uh, and of course, come up immediately for this meeting. Brother Will, what time do you start next door? Start in 20 minutes next door. Children will do the same thing. We try and follow the pattern, and that way, of course, that um, you can be able to pick your children up, your teenagers up, at the same time, and so please be mindful about that. And uh, we have, I think, somebody else getting ready uh, to be baptized. As uh, somebody enters into the water, if you will, and to get baptized, please, if you can, stay around in the auditorium to be able to do that. We're proud of her receiving Christ tonight, also following the Lord in baptism. And uh, so we are so very, very proud of her in doing that. Uh, and so please be mindful to stay around a little bit, if you can, and uh, be able to watch her get baptized. That's wonderful. We thank the Lord for that as well. Okay, we'll sing our way out. And we'll sing the chorus of In My Heart There Rings a Melody. Watch me at the beginning. In my heart. 